I've heard, uh, <laughs> I've heard this expression that is in the Philadelphia water. The bass players who came out of Philadelphia uh, pretty much had to live up to a certain standard of the ones that, that pioneered the uh, walking bass concept and improvising and just, and just playing bass in general. Um, one of the real early guys, we go way back to Percy Heath, go back to um, John Lamb, who was with uh, uh, Duke Ellington for a while, uh, passed through here. Uh, and I don't want to get into names because there are so many and there's no way I'll remember all of them. But uh, there, there were uh, jazz bass players go way back here. It was a recording by Charles Mingus that I remember just really grabbed me. It was the, one of his older recordings called The Clown. And I remember something just came over me that I wanted to play that instrument. But I never thought of becoming professional. I just knew that I just wanted that instrument in my life just as a hobby because I did have a steady uh, day job that I was um, pretty much locked into. And so I went downtown one day and I paid on a, made a down payment on a base that I saw in a pawn shop. And I hadn't even touched it. I just looked at it and knew that I wanted it and I made a down payment. I went back a while later and uh, got it out. And I'll never forget the smile on my face the first time I plucked the instrument. It, it was amazing. It's, it still hadn't gone away. You know, that smile is still there. When an artist feels that they was ready for international exposure and wanted to record with major uh, groups and go on the road with major groups, they would uh, pack up their gear and move to New York for that exposure. I never felt comfortable uh, doing that, but I was blessed with the opportunity of mainstream artists reaching out to me in Philadelphia. I was with uh, Billy Paul, one of the first major artists I was with. You know, he won the Grammy for the Me and Mrs. Jones recording. That was followed by uh, many, many, many years off and on with guitarist Pat Martino. I did four uh, recordings with Pat Martino, which I was honored to do. That was followed by 19 years with Max Roach, with whom I did record, I also recorded uh, six uh, CDs. And um, uh, during the last few years with Max, I was started wanting to concentrate more on composition. And I uh, formed a, a string ensemble, because strings are my first love. I formed the string ensemble, and uh, I had the honor of receiving two or three recording contracts uh, to record with that group. And in addition to that, I've gotten uh, uh, grants from the Pew Foundation to, uh, to write a, um, a book of my original compositions. Uh, and it came with a companion CD of me performing the pieces. Sometimes you lose the balance between the scholastic approach and the natural approach. For example, a lot of young people would get uh, recording contracts and yet they have no life experience behind the music. It would be pretty much schooled and with limited heart. The main goal from that era through this one is to find your own voice and to express yourself from your heart. Really, I remember an old saying that Max used to use. He said that uh, um, uh, Lester Young used to say, I hear a lot of notes, but what's your story? So what he was saying is that oftentimes the, the link between what's in your heart and what you want to express through your life experiences is oftentimes lost from not being in touch with your life in that way and projecting it through music. I would love to have had more formal training. And so, but I do understand that it's the life experience that you have to put into the music to really make it, uh, to give it substance.